Good evening again, my dear students and uh, welcome dear parents. Uh, this is the live classroom of the program titled My Teacher. So, it is a pleasure again to join you for this program. It is a as you know it is a live session. So, in fact, uh, today's session uh, I, I understand many of you, many especially the grade 12 students must be in a very busy preparations especially for the practical examinations. For the practical examinations when I say most of the schools you are going to have the board practical examination, the serious most serious examination uh, the coming week. So, the full week the board practical examinations are going to be there. So, I hope all of you are uh, into it and preparing seriously uh, revising the experiments thoroughly we are going to uh, perform the uh, exam. So, let me take this opportunity wish you all best of luck because luck also plays an important role that depends on what you say how you perform that of course, depends on which all experience you are getting as well. So, uh, uh, let me extend my praise as well uh, to all my dear students who are appearing for the board practical examinations to uh, the coming week. So, today's live classroom is basically dedicated to those children, those students who are appearing for the board practical examinations the coming week. So, as you know since it is a live session, if you have any sort of confusions or doubts related to any of the experiments, you know basically uh, when I say the experiments, the, the specifications of the apparatus and all uh, it may be different, it may be varying from school to school, but in general what is the basic concept and all what all up to what maximum possible, up to what maximum extent possible. Uh, I would be able to help you out if you have any queries to ask. So, with that note, we move on to today's class. So, again I remind you when we go through the contents. So, I have a few videos here to explaining some experiments and I will give you some tips or the uh, areas of concern or areas to remember when you go for the practical examinations for grade 12. So, again uh, whoever is there at home for grade 12 students tune into this program for this hour. So, it would be uh, surely helpful for the coming examination uh, which is going to be the next week. And if parents are uh, there at home you can uh, record this or you can take it from the catch off as well uh, uh, and uh, let your uh, children watch this program at the later stage also uh, for the preparations for the examinations. With that note let me uh, move on to today's program, today's class rather. See when we uh, talk about practical uh, experiments, you know in CBSC we have total of 15 experiments to be performed and there are some 6 activities and you must be must have done a project work as well. So, very first thing I want to tell you is when you uh, go for the examination take this many things with you like you should have your journal, you should have the activity book uh, if it is recorded separately, you should have your project file, make sure you have uh, all the necessary requirements uh, in the sense uh, like you have the uh, pencil scale all sort of uh, things, you keep them ready before going for the examination, do not forget this when you go for the exam. So, there are mainly, mainly in 12th, 12th grade there are um, uh, different sets of experiments, mainly light related experiments and electricity related experiments. Electricity related experiments first I will mention about that. You have measuring devices like ammeter and voltmeter. So, first let me tell you in general about what all areas you have to take into account when you do electricity experiments. right? So, the very first thing when you find a place where the, your apparatus is set for the exam okay, and you are you are entering the just uh, or it is a picturized this way you are entering the exam hall, you are getting an experiment, you see that these are all experiments you are going to perform in the coming 3 hours of the examination. We have uh, like you have to complete one, uh, one experiment in 1 and a half hours and the second experiment in the next 1 and a half hours. 
So, you have two experiments to be done, you have to write down the details of the experiments, you have an answer sheet. So, anyway first you find out the place where you are going to be for doing the first experiment and if it is an electricity experiment what all things you have to check your I will tell you. Anyway very first thing you write down the details according to uh, the requirement like we have to uh, you should know what is the aim of the experiment you have to read the question carefully because you know uh, the question in what way the question is asked in the board examination practical exam paper it may not be the same as what you have done in the class. So, what exactly required as per the question or what may not be needed or what is not required uh, you have done so many things in the lab, but that many are not required uh, as per the question. So, you find out what exactly uh, is the requirement of the, of the question that is first thing. Then aim, apparatus, theory or formula whatever it is then um, uh, whenever you write a formula you should always try to explain uh, what all those symbols indicate you have to write down the uh, indicator for that ok this particular symbol represents this quantity like that. Then you should uh, draw the diagram and when you draw the diagram also you do not be uh, what you say uh, it is like you should take always enough space for drawing the diagrams and the diagrams uh, in fact uh, even in the theory answers as well I always used to say about this as well that is the diagrams always uh, uh, it is an integral part of the answer and it has its own importance or significance. So, do not squeeze the diagram along with the answer you know or if you draw a diagram uh, you know taking enough space all right then uh, label uh, properly draw neatly ok uh, right and you are presenting your answer how you present your answer as effectively as possible that is def that definitely uh, counts a lot. So, after that you have to draw the uh, observation column. Then after writing these details what you have to do is you have to show it to the examiner that is what you what you need to do right. The examiner will check it then you can start doing it. Of course, you have drawn a circuit diagram right. When you draw the circuit diagram the first thing you have to identify is what all the components needed as per the circuit diagram. Components needed may be ammeter, voltmeter, rheostat right switch we need. So, according to the from the diagram from the circuit diagram you are drawing you do need to identify what all the uh, components uh, required for that particular experiment. So, identify those components right if you know those components see you make sure all these components are available. If anything is not available if it is not there with the uh, with what is supplied to you uh, surely you can speak to the examiner or whoever is uh, uh, in charge of that you can talk to them and get the necessary apparatus if anything is missing. And if anything extra there right you have say so many uh, more than 1 ammeter is there or more than 1 voltmeter is there if something of that sort is there you just keep them away right. So, you near place which you are going to assign uh, for your uh, the uh, what you call as the working area uh, should have only those components which are necessary as per the circuit diagram correct. The next thing what you have to do is in, wo in what order the uh, circuit is drawn in what order the components are arranged in the circuit same order you arrange the components that is the next thing maybe a meter or voltmeter. So, what all components uh, required for the experiment you arrange them accordingly ok. So, because from the first appearance itself when, you, when the examiner uh, checks your uh, uh, circuit from the first appearance itself one should be able to identify ok you have done it correctly or there is a mistake you know it is like easily they will be able to make it. It should not uh, be appeared uh, what is a messy like a meter over here a voltmeter over here from a meter the connection is coming like this should, should not be of that sort ok. So, arrange the components accordingly the next thing what you have to do is uh, connect them one by one. Before starting your connection one more thing you have to you have to check or a, a few things let me say. First one remember very important point we uh, listen very carefully you know the the meters a meter or voltmeter or any me, any meter in that matter before connecting the pointer should be coincident with 0 the pointer is there no it should be with 0 reading only. Sometimes you know this is what you have to make sure 
if it is not at 0, maybe it is like uh, uh, more other than uh, 0, any other reading, maybe below 0, something if it is, it is not coinciding with 0, that means that the device has got an error, the measuring instrument has got an error. So, you have to replace it, ask for another one instead of trying to repair it, okay, ask for another one, got it, if 0 is not coinciding or pointer is not coinciding with 0, okay, that is one thing. Okay, so, you made sure uh, 0 uh, error or 0 uh, error is not 0 is coinciding with the pointer. Okay? If it is not, you should replace it. I, th I think that part is that part is clear. If it is not like that, okay, if it is not, you replace and if it is ok, it is 0 is coincident only. Okay? Then next thing what you have to do is, you just shake it like this, you know the, the meter or voltmeter because you know they will be using this device for uh, many uh, years. So, there may be problem with the instrument. So, just shake it like that. So, the pointer moves simply in this way. So, after that when you keep it back to the original uh, place, if it does not coincide with 0 that means you know while taking the readings, it is deflected but it does not come back. You may think that that remains there, that reading only, only always you will write. You got the point. So, what you have to do is just, uh, uh, just move it a little bit and make sure the pointer does not get stuck, okay, it comes back to 0 again. Okay, one is about zero correction. I said. The second is you make sure the pointer doesn't get stuck. So clear. That's about a meter, voltmeter, or any 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 sort of measuring devices in that matter. If anything in anything of that sort, if you observe, definitely you should take this assistance of the uh, in charge over there in the lab. Okay. So the next thing what you have to do is find out what's the least count of the device. Say maybe it is a milliameter or a meter or voltmeter or milli-voltmeter or micro-ammeter, whatever is the device, find what is the minimum measurement that you would be able to take, take the, from the device. So, least count let us say it is like uh, suppose an ammeter, it shows uh, just look at this uh, board. So, 0 is here for a meter and there are 10 divisions after this you see 2, this is a meter, okay, it is 2. So, what you observe is the 2 is divided into 10 equal divisions. So, the least count of this is how much 2 by 10 that is 0 0.2 ampere is the least count. I hope it is clear. Okay, so, you find out what is the least count of the given device. All right, suppose it is like coming as 2.5. So, the least count of the device is 0 0.25 ampere. Okay, that is how it is. That is one thing to understand. You make sure the uh, make sure how much is the or you determine the least count of the measuring device. Okay, we found out that. So, write them down in the answer sheet as well about the least count. The next thing what you have to understand is what you have to check is the connection wires. You know, there are different types of connection wires you are using in the lab. The connection wires also when you use, you know. Uh, the connection from one terminal to the other, the wire we are selecting to connect should be of appropriate length only. Maybe the otherwise you say one terminal is here, the next terminal is close to the uh, uh, close to you, but you are taking a very long wire. You know the whole wire will be messy like so. Take only appropriate length of the wire, and not only that. And uh, there one thing you have to you understand carefully is like the one which uh, the, the wire which you are using to connect the jockey. You know in meter bridge and potential meter experiments we use a jockey. So, the wire because the jockey we have to move it from one end to the other you know. So, that wire should be long wire. Okay. Anyway, all the wires in case you are using you know some of the schools they use the copper wire you know the single copper wire with uh, the uh, cloth uh, covering, cloth coating, cloth covering, the thread covering. If you use the, the that, that kind of wire, there is a problem with that. You know the wire uh, you know it appears to be a single wire, but in between there may be a break. That break, if you are not able to oh, identify, then will be, you will not get the readings. So, first thing what you have to do is for all the wires, just quickly just go through the if you are using that copper wire, just quickly go through the wire in this way. That is, if this is the wire, just hold it like this and check if there is no break in between. Not only that, you make sure the two ends of the wire are bare, you know, it is like insulation is properly removed. And if it is a single copper wire, one more thing you can do is you may be given as what you call as a sandpaper, you know, with that you can clean the ends of the wire as well. 
So, these are the initial things you have to make sure about the electricity experiments. Once again, I will brief you, draw the circuit diagram, identify the components required, make sure that you have got all the components there available. If not, you have to get it and if anything extra, you have to take out. Clear of any unwanted electronic components or electrical components there from your place. Then what else find out is there any zero error there on the device. Then you see it does not get stuck. After that, you make sure you are <coughs> sorry, does not get stuck. And after that, find out the least count. After finding the least count, check the connection wires. Connection wires also, it should be uh, make sure there is no break in between. And at the same time, note down what is the or uh, make sure the two ends of the wire are clean, it is proper for appropriate for connection. Okay, these are the things to remember for electricity experiments. And again in general, when you draw a graph for uh, related to the experiments, make sure uh, the you are plotting the, you are marking the y and x axis properly according to the right quantities. Along with that, if you uh, that is you have to write the scale on the top of the graph paper as well. So, do not forget to write the scale and of course, there are certain in most on almost all the experiments, you should be uh, ready to uh, write, you should be able to write the uh, precautions and sources of error as well uh, for these experiments. Okay. So, these are the basic things required for electricity experiments. You know, when I, when, we, when I talk about electricity experiments, some of you uh, may be thinking of Ohm's law experiment, then uh, after that we have meter bridge related experiments. Uh, in meter bridge related experiment also, we have uh, uh, different like different types like uh, determination of specific resistance is there, then calculation of effective resistance or verification of the law of combination, series, parallel, then galvanometer experiment is there. Right? These are the general experiments we have for in electricity. So, in electricity experiments, one of the experiments that you have problems that you may have problems with is potentiometer experiment. So, by again let me tell you we are discussing the contents related to grade 12 practical physics. So, I, I was briefing you about the necessary requirements or the things to remember when you go for uh, practical examinations and we are talking about the electricity experiments. Now, I will show you a very short video which will tell you about how a meter bridge experiment works. Okay, after that, I will explain about the potentiometer experiment. Okay, so, today whatever possible maximum I will explain and we will see something if possible if time permits we will discuss something about viva as well. Okay, so, any questions if you have from your side surely you would be able to call and find out. Okay, so, just watch this video about meter bridge experiment just watch it. Okay. Watch the video. So, this is an experiment that is related to meter bridge. So, this is the circuit diagram you can see in the circuit diagram, this is the actual setup there is left gap and right gap, right gap and left gap. First you have to connect the unknown resistance in the left gap of the meter bridge. Sometimes you may be doing it in the right, head gap, right gap also you can see it is connected in the left gap here. Sometimes in the school you might have done it with the left gap uh, sorry uh, right gap. Negative terminal of the galvanometer point D of the meter bridge just I uh, will show it to you watch it. Okay, It is connected to D that is the center. Okay, That is one connection galvanometer post terminal of the galvanometer with jockey. <coughs> okay, it is connected to jockey. Right? Yeah, that is the jockey which is movable through the meter bridge wire. Resistance box in the right gap. So, you can see the resistance box which can which can be used to include non resistances. See this is the resistance box you must be familiar with. So, you can see the values written. So, non resistances you can include there. But remember whenever you use resistance box you make sure it is tight you know, all the uh, keys are tight. Okay, so, you see the next connection. 
So, it is connected to this end. Now, we are connecting the through a key we are connecting to a battery you can see it is a key positive terminal to the negative terminal of the battery. The plug key now you are connecting to the battery. All right. Now, we have to connect the negative terminal to the last point that is point A of the meter bridge. Okay, so, this is the overall connection of the meter bridge. So, hope it is clear. So, you have a just have a look at the circuit diagram. Have a look at the circuit diagram now. Once again, galvanometer is there, resistance box, unknown resistance. You can see this, see this is the you can see this is the unknown resistance that is the wire whose resistance to be determined, battery we have and a key. Okay, so, all these uh, connections are ready now. This is the way you have to do the experiment. All right now, see the uh, different variations may be there uh, from school to school uh, the method you have done. So, but in general if you are using this kind of a setup for doing the experiment, it is clear that you have to uh, use the equation x is equal to, see which equation you will use is x is equal to r into L by 100 minus L provided you are taking the balancing length L from the left side left to right. Okay, but if you were using the unknown resistance in the right gap and known resistance in the left gap you might have used the equation x is equal to r into 100 minus l by l. So, you just check the uh, tabular column, but when we draw the tabular column also certain things to remember that I will tell you now. First thing is you should draw the uh, in every tabular column every column every column you should write the unit just above the tabular column that is one thing. Second thing is the readings should be always matching with the least count of the device meaning. So, for example, the current you are measuring the measurement of current is let us say uh, you get it as let us say a 4.2 ampere okay, in a reading, but see the least count is 0 0.01 ampere let us say if this is the least count and this is the uh, current you are uh, writing then it may not be an accepted format because there are two digits after the decimal point for the least count. So, there should be two digits you should write it as 4.20. So, how many digits should be there in the reading even if there is you know it is 4.2 mathematically it is the same, but even if it is 4.2 you should write as 4.20 because the least count has got two digits there. Say you must be remember the, 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 the those who have done the traveling microscope experiment for determination of the refractive index. There you can see one thing. So, the read the least count of uh, microscope is 0 0.001 centimeter right. So, the readings you should write you should uh, present the reading in this way like say if you are getting a reading 5.26 as one reading total reading. If this is the reading still you should write one 0 also because over here the least count has got 3 digits. So, it also should have so, it should be matching with the least count. And again another aspect to understand is suppose this is say least count of a device is only 0 0.1, but you write the reading as 5.26 this also is not correct. Why because only one digit is possible after the decimal point we are not sure about this uh, digit. So, we cannot write that digit just 5.2 or if you round it off it is 5.3. So, only one digit should be there I hope it is clear. Okay. So, now this is what you have to remember about practicals. Uh, yes, certain points, but uh, one more thing I will tell you another experiment also I will show you a small video related to the potentiometer experiment. Remember in potentiometer experiment again we will have uh, I was planning to discuss many things related to practicals, but still according to what is available time we will be able to discuss some uh, areas and uh, as I mentioned in the beginning in case if you have want to ask anything also you can do or listen to the class carefully and you can uh, watch it again in the catch up. Okay. Anyway, just uh, look at this video. Now, I will show you a video that will show the uh, experiment related to potentiometer, but one more one thing let me tell you. In potentiometer there are two sections of ex, uh, circuits, one is primary circuit and uh, this I like primary circuit consists of a battery, a key, rheostat and coming back to the terminal A. Then there is secondary circuit, secondary circuit has got the Leclanchet cell, the Daniel cell and 
galvanometer. So, the galvanometer is con uh, contained in the secondary circuit. So, uh, we are finding the valence length. Just see the experiment. Then I will show you about Leclanche, a little detail about Leclanche and Daniel cell, I will tell you. Okay, first watch this video. Watch it. Switch. Let I be the current flowing through the primary circuit and R be the resistance of the potentiometer wire per meter length. The DPDT switch is pressed towards C1, D1 so that cell E1 is included in the secondary circuit. The jockey is and zero deflection in the balancing length is L1. The potential difference across the balancing length L equal to IRL1. The balance difference across the balancing length is L2 is equal to IRL2. Then E2 is equal to IRL2. Dividing 1 and 2 we get E1 by E2 is equal to L1 by L2. is known. MF of the other cell can be calculated using the relation E2 is equal to E1 into L2 by L1. you got the point. See potentiometer is one of the experiments which usually uh, you may be finding a little confusing because of the complication in the circuits. So, uh, now I am going for a very short break. After the break when I come back we I will show you about the Leclanche cell and Daniel cell which you use in this which uh, you will be able to which may be useful for the uh, viva. So, stay tuned with NTV after a short break I will come back. Stay tuned.